Responsive design, that is the topic today. So typically, when you design a layout, like we've been doing in desktop, you also have to ensure that it works on all device sizes, all right? So that means all the various laptop and desktop sizes, to tablets, to phones as well. And knowing how to take a layout and make it adapt from a UI design perspective is very important. So I'm gonna show you how to do that with this layout right here, which is a layout that we've already worked on in different contexts. And then at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and put you to the test where you could do the same thing with this layout, which is also a previous layout in this series. So as always, make sure to subscribe. Let's get started. All right, so make sure you check out lesson four in the Figma community file, which, you know, of course, is linked in the YouTube description. And you'll find this familiar design. Um, we actually did this in the very first nav bars challenge up here. And our goal here is to make this responsive um, to fit these two frames at least. Now, of course, it needs to be something where you it works at every single size, every tiny little size in between, because devices, like I mentioned at the beginning, you know, they're, they're just plentiful in, in their sizes. But just to get practice, we're just gonna focus on these two right here. And the first thing we're gonna start with is the navigation. It's at the top and that that's what makes most sense. And there are considerations that are specific to navigations when you're trying to make them responsive. Um, and I, I see a lot of people get this wrong often. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing I'm gonna do is just grab the, uh, the logo and we're gonna paste it in over here. Now, Mind you, we're still not messing with components and all that stuff. I know that would make it a thousand times easier um, if this were a serious project, but we're gonna get into that stuff a little bit later because I really just wanna focus on you know the fundamentals, not worried about features too much uh, with Figma. So the size, the, one of the things that you have to, to really drill into your mind is, is the size, does, is the size of whatever I'm going to be translating into this tablet right here, this tablet layout, as you can see, it says iPad Pro 11. Um, you can see, uh, you can ask yourself, does it need to change size? You know, is it too big or is it too small? Um, typically, you're going to be scaling things down when you work your way down to smaller device widths. Um, but this size right here, I don't think it needs to be adjusted at all. I think it's perfectly fine as is. Um, the next thing to ask yourself, is there enough room for the navigation, the primary nav, you know, header navigation? And sometimes if you wanna to try to get all the links in, you can do it. Oftentimes, if you get into it a much smaller size like this, you're not gonna have enough room to put all the links or all the links to the pages. Um, but you could still have room for some of the most important links. All right, and whatever doesn't get included or shown in this navigation, because we lack the width or the space to place them, can go inside of a hamburger menu, which is the typical UX pattern. You, you, know, you use something on your phone, you, you click on the little three lines, that's called a hamburger icon, and then a menu flies out, that's how you access the menu, and we do that because there's just not enough space to place it here in the header section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, because remember, this is also a link. It's just a primary call to action. It's the most important. That's why it stands out the most. We want people to join. So I'm gonna keep that over here, all right? And I'm not gonna put it to the very right because to the very right, I'm going to leave room or space for a hamburger menu. So Iconify, which I mentioned in, earlier in the series, is a plugin that's free and we can type in menu right here. And these will give you just a bunch of different menu options. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna scale it up because it looks you know, pretty small where it was. And you don't want these things to be too small because remember people are using them with their fingers, all right? So they're gonna be tapping it. That also means you don't want this too close to where they're accidentally pressing stuff that they didn't want to. I'm gonna hide this. Uh, layout grid right there so you could center this actually and that could work as well or you could right align it and that could work too so i'll just leave it right here for now and there you go now you would have to design if this were a real project an actual navigation uh, overlay but we're not going to do that here in this video i just really want to focus on oops i didn't replicate that there we go 
I just want to focus on the responsive part and that stuff. So in the next section is this, I, the hero section, which is split up into two parts, this green section and this top section right here. And what you have to ask yourself when you're dealing with responsive design is you're thinking of columns and rows, really. Right here, we have two columns, all right? One, two, two pieces of type. Well, clearly we don't have enough space because if I were to replicate this and drag it over here, we can't fit it all in, right? Even if we made it smaller, it, it would still be difficult to fit those in on the same row. So what we need is two rows in one column. So you kind of create the opposite effect. Here's one row and two columns, but we're, now we're gonna need two rows in one column, okay, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is just grab this, hold Alt, and just drag over, which will allow us to uh, replicate it. And we're gonna put this right here in line. And we can also toggle on our layout right here. And we can see it does extend outside of this, which we do not want. So we can just make this a little bit smaller until it all fits in. Or we could also just drag this in as well. Because I, I personally don't like having the three words. I don't like having learning platforms split up into two lines. I think it makes most sense just to do this. And that works well. Don't even have to scale this down. I'm fine with it as is. Because remember, we want our navigations to be large. I mean, I'm sorry, our headings. So let me just toggle that off. This is looking solid so far. And remember, I want you to take, take note of these little minute differences. Because I didn't mention it when I did it. But notice the amount of white space from here to here, right? This little gray thing. And then now let's go take that same element and replicate it and put it right where it was underneath the logo. And notice there's way more here. So you're also, when you're dealing with responsive design, you're also taking into consideration and adjusting the other UI fundamentals, such as white space. Typically you're gonna have less white space um, on a tablet in a phone layout as compared to the desktop. All right, so now let's go ahead and replicate this, the subheadline, and this actually works perfectly as is. Yeah, and that works. Okay, I may want to add a little more line height there. Okay, so now we have the green section. So this one's a little bit more tricky because it's almost like an illustration, sort of weird sort of layout. Um, but to make things a little bit easier on myself, and yourself if you're following along. I'm taking all this type right here and I've selected all these layers over here on the left. And what I'm gonna do is right click and just choose flatten. So no longer is it editable text, but now it's become, you know, essentially. Now here's the thing, I may wanna back up because it has changed my coloring. So what I'll do instead is just grab these four right there. I will flatten those, there we go. And then we could take these two and flatten those and then take this and flatten it as well. Okay, now it's all flattened. And it's just gonna make it a lot easier for us to scale things down. So what I wanna do is take, I, I'm just gonna take the frame tool F on your keyboard and I'm going to get the same color here. There we go. And now what I'm gonna do is take this, um, you know, those three elements that we flattened and just hold alt and drag them over here and then hold shift with them still selected right around here or so. All right, so after scaling down, we're gonna go ahead and push this right here. Hold, I. Uh, we're gonna select this element and get it up, yeah, right around there. And then we'll take the, um, the button here, which I'm just gonna group real quick. These two elements, hold alt and drag over. This is too large now, so I'm gonna take this and, and scale it down um, to like around 28, and this as well. And again, if we had auto layout, it would make this stuff easier, get to that stuff in the future. Scale this down a bit. And then I think I'll just align this right here underneath this column established by Git, the G in Git. And then just take this and put it right around there. We could per perhaps make this a little bit larger yeah, something like that. And there we go. 
so we don't have the space to do this, you know, to have the console, the git clone, layer code, and then the button over here. We just don't have the width. So you have to intelligently try to maintain all the same elements, although you can hide elements if you need to and show elements only on, you know, and vice versa, like on, on, I, on tablet here and phone. Uh, but for the most part, you want to maintain your elements and you don't want to diverge too far or too much away from what you started with here on desktop. Okay. Um, I see a lot of people, they just try to change the layout way too much and you don't want to do that. Your front end developer will murder you. <laughs> okay. So now, now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead in this part's easy. This, this trust symbol section down here, you know, I could take this and just replicate it and get it into position and then just grab a few of these not sure what that is all right and then copy them hold alt we can scale them down just a little bit but not too much let's get this scaled up move these up and there we go that right there is um, a tablet variation responsive variation of this layout except this is going to work on tablets or you know, devices similar to this width now what about when we get even smaller to phones so this is an iphone 14 and 15 pro max screen you can see the width is 430 over here the ipad pro the width is is actually 834 almost twice as much and then over here we have a width of 1920 which is well over 2x this so this drastically has to change our designs but we want to minimize the changes as much as possible again it's all about looking at your your columns and in 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 your in figuring out what are we going to collapse or into a to multiple uh, rows instead of columns so now this time, we're not gonna have enough room to put these three elements. So really what we'll do is just take our layer code right here. And this time we do need to make it smaller. We're at 35, you know, we can go as small as about 20 or so for the logo. And then we'll take our hamburger menu and scale that down as well. And we'll position it right around there, I think would be solid, there we go. All right, so let's hide this, okay? And again, I don't think we would, you, know, you actually might have enough room if we scale down the size of the type. It's already, it's at 24, so if we did something like 18, we'll see if we have enough room. We might actually have enough room. And if that's the case, then we will adjust this. Sorry, there we go. Okay, so this needs to be drastically adjusted here. So this is telling me, let me click on this, our auto layout. And that's because this is not set up correctly. There we go. Okay. So we do actually have enough space to put that, but I, th I feel that it's way too thick. So what we can do is adjust the border down from three to two. And then also we'll take a look at the drop shadow and I'll change this from four on the X um, and two as well. So now it's not quite, it doesn't quite uh, stand out as much. So let's see here. There we go. I still think it looks way too large. So what I'm gonna do is reduce it to 16. I wanna go less than that and put that right there. So that could work as well. Okay, so basically the same thing. And then, you know, these two parts, again, we just maintain the two rows that we already established, except now we have to make this quite a bit smaller. So let's try like 40 here and let's reduce the line height. All right, and notice how I'm not really paying attention, a ton of attention to like, oh, okay, so this, this line height is this value and this width over here based on this width, you know, it, not everything has to be perfectly um, in terms of ratio. I, I personally just eyeball things in the distances of, of how things are scaled down. Some people, um, you know, take the opposite approach and want to be super, super anal about everything. Um, not me. 
I think we can make boost that up to about size 18 or 20 would work. There we go. All right, and once again, we have this section here. We're just about wrapping up. This I'm gonna just drag out for a second. We're gonna take these elements and Alt, left click, drag over. And then once again, we'll just scale this down. You wanna make sure when you're scaling down type for um, you know smaller devices that they are at least going to be readable on those devices. So it's important to test this stuff as much as possible. You know, let me just group these together so I don't have to keep on selecting them individually. We'll pull this up. All right, we'll get our execute button and the, the execute button has the same fate as this join today. We have to make this smaller. So again, we'll just go to like um, 18 or so and adjust this. We could put this into an auto layout actually, make our life a little bit easier. And once again, I'm just gonna reduce the stroke width and take the drop shadow and reduce that to two as well. You know, you could do different things. Like for instance, you could, well, if we took this out, eh, now we're, we're just gonna keep the same kind of idea Push this down to get it more centered. Almost done here. And then we have our little thingy right there. And again, the reason we're doing this um, with, with these different viewport variations is the fact that uh, you know, if you have a front-end developer, they need to see how the design is going to be modified and how they need to handle this in CSS, the front-end development uh, portion. So very important to get this stuff done um, when you're working with another front-end developer or so. And again, this is going to be the same concept. You know, we just take these elements here, scale them down just a bit. And this could be like a scrolling marquee of sorts of different logos, like one right here. And then I know there's another one off here to the side somewhere, but yeah, you get the point. Let's just keep it like this, a little bit more spread out. All right, and there you go. So this was a fairly simple uh, demonstration of creating a responsive design. Everything basically stayed the same here between these two. Um, other scenarios might be a little bit more complex than this, um, but now it's gonna be your turn. And now you're gonna switch to the lesson four responsive design challenge right here. So this is the, the desktop that I want you to start with. Um, and it, it might be a little bit tricky, but just follow along. I, uh, you know, just remember everything I taught you here in this design and apply the same concepts to this one. Th think about, you know, start with the navigation. And again, here's your two different uh, screens to design for, same ones as the previous one. And try to make logical decisions about what makes sense for adjusting this. You know, you're probably not gonna have enough room to have these three columns right here. So think about how you're going to modify these. All right, so submit your work. After you're done with this, click share, click copy link. Um, all the submission instructions are in the description here, here uh, on YouTube, wherever you're watching this, and try to get them submitted within three hours of this video having been uploaded. So around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll take a look at some of the I, the, the submissions tomorrow, and we'll see how you all did. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll see you soon. Check out designcourse.com, sub up here, and I'll see you, bye.